So how do you perform an anal pap smear, otherwise known as anal cytology? Well, here are the model of your colon and rectum. Within the colon and rectum, you have columnar cells, which are the glandular cells of our colon that help secrete mucus and absorb water. Down in the lowest part of the rectum, which is the anus, we have what's called squamous cells. Squamous cells are basically our skin cells. So what we do with the anal pap smear is we want to identify the cells that sit in the lining between these columnar cells and squamous cells. This occurs about two to three centimeters inside of the anus, and we call this the transition zone or the squamal columnar junction. That is just the doctor word for where the colon cells meet the skin cells. So those are the important cells that we want to see for this anal pap smear or anal cytology screening. These are the ones that are going to help us identify anal dysplasia. So in order to do this test, it's a very simple test that can be performed in the doctor's office. It also can be performed by the patient. There's been some good research to show that self-collection of the anal cytology has been as accurate as provider collection. And sometimes patients can feel more comfortable performing this on their own within the clinic. So in order to do this, the patient lays on their side and a small we call this a dacron or a very soft probe, is gently inserted into the anus and rectum. Once that's inserted, we swab around in a few circles to make sure that this little probe collects some of the cells that sit here at this transitional zone. So once that is removed, then we utilize a prep called a thin prep. This is very similar to a cervical pap smear if you've had one of those before. The bottle is opened. The provider will then take your specimen and place that into the bottle. Swirl it around so all the little cells can be placed within the fluid. Then once that's performed, the probe is discarded. The bottle is closed. And then this is sent to the lab for review under the microscope. With the results of this, it can be a few things. First, it can say unsatisfactory, which means you just weren't able to collect the cells that were required for them to review the imaging. This just means you weren't able to collect the cells that were required to make a diagnosis under the microscope. This doesn't mean you as a provider did anything wrong. It just means that this is a blind test. You're not looking directly at the lining of the transitional zone. So sometimes the amount of cells required are not picked up and the test needs to be repeated. The next result you can receive is normal with adequate visualization of the transition zone. Then after that, the next one is called ASCUS or atypical squamous cells of unknown significance. This is not a bad or a good thing. It just means that there are some atypical cells within the rectum that should be followed up appropriately. This may mean you should go for high resolution anoscopy or an additional test that looks directly at the lining of the rectum or just repeat the pap smear in six to 12 months. Next, you may see a finding called low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions, which are precancerous cells to squamous cell carcinoma of the anus. However, they are in a very, very, very precancerous form and very low likelihood that it will progress to anal cancer. Finally, you may see a finding of high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. These are more concerning and should be treated appropriately. This typically requires proceeding with high-resolution anoscopy and biopsy and fulguration or cauterization of the areas of concern. Findings of high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions are especially important to treat for those patients living with HIV and those men having sex with men. These are those that are at elevated risk of developing anal cancer. Overall, remember, the rate of anal cancer within the country is very low. However, in these certain populations, it is important to seek appropriate screening and treatment.